Blooming on Fry Street A Morning Glory Trip Report by Great Ludovico Uploaded on Arrowhead on May 30, 2000 This was not my first experiment with Morning Glory seeds but it was certainly the most effective and intense. I had heard of and tried several different methods of preparing the seeds, such as soaking the seeds overnight and drinking the water, but I have found the easiest and most effective method for myself. I made a trip to Walmart and picked up 36 packages of seeds each containing an average of 50 to 60 seeds. Figuring th three packages or 150 seeds is a decent dose. I got nine packages or three hits each of heavenly blue, pearly gates, white, scarlet O'Hara, red, and mixed colors. I use Burpee brand instead of the dreaded Better Homes and Gardens brand, which are treated to induce nausea. Burby seeds are grown and packaged in Holland and or France, and it reflects upon these countries very different views on personal freedom and accountability. God bless Europeans. I have used burpees four times and have only gotten six sick once, which in retrospect can be accounted to the fact that I ate a large meal just prior to consuming the seeds, which had been mixed with fruit juice for two days. I served what I got and was naive and disrespectful of the native Mesotex rituals and practice of fasting and meditation in preparation for a spiritual journey. We owe our knowledge of the psychoactive properties of morning glories, salvia divinorum and psilocybin mushrooms to those indigenous people. For preparation, I dumped the seeds separated by different kinds into bowls. I then placed them in a tight screen strainer and ran warm water over them for a minute or two to remove any dirt or other impurities. I let them dry on a flat screen over a kitchen exhaust fan. I then put them in an electric coffee grinder to grind them up into a fine powder. This requires vigorously shaking the coffee grinder in order to grind up the hard seed coats. I was left with about 2 teaspoons ground seed matter per hit. I had bought some 00 sized gelatin capsules at a local health food store and dumped the ground seeds back into their bowls and packed them tightly into the capsules. Each cap holds about 25 seeds worth, so 6 caps equals 1 head. I went to the Fry Street Music and Arts Festival in Denton, Texas, which has a very large hippie community and it's no accident it's called Fry Street. I had fasted for about 12 hours overnight when I dropped for maximum effect, but two to three hours is the minimum. And this is for people with pretty stable stomachs. I took five caps of Heavenly Blue. My friend took four of Scarlet O'Hara on the way there and we smoked a joint to mellow us out for the, for the trip and to relieve any nausea. Even untreated seeds can make your stomach ache. I began to feel it after about 45 minutes, being in an uplifting mood but didn't notice any major perceptual changes for about 2 hours. I peaked at around 4 hours. I have found that morning glories do not have strong forceful visuals and while this LSD effect can be reached, it takes focus and concentration on this and not really a main desired effect for me. But the main hallucinogenic effect 
is the increased intensity of color and fascination with things of nature. I wandered around this cross-cultural mecca of sorts, seeing people of every different corner of a vast counterculture and felt the harmony of the universe and humanity's place in the sun, seeing our species potential for love and creating beauty. I spent a lot of time watching couples together and analyzing opposite sex relations with a new clarity and insight. I was perfectly content wandering by myself, but was not at all antisocial and engaged in much conversation with my friends who were there. I gave six cap each to my friend and his brother, but only the one who was less experienced with LSD felt the effects to be stronger than the pot we smoked after they dropped. I gave another friend who had until just the past months seriously smoked pot two caps. His only effect was being in an uplifted mood. I was definitely in a mystical state for about three hours when I decided I wanted to take it up a notch and took four more caps. I smoked some kind bud which was very potent and tasted like a pine forest in my mouth. Just after this was my peak, which very abruptly turned from euphoria to pain. I had been walking aimlessly through the crowd, feeling a little alone when I stopped for some reason. I wasn't even looking ahead and stood there for about 5 minutes before I realized I stopped right by my friend's brother who I just met and couldn't have recognized from behind in a crowd of about 12,000. He was having a good trip and I was fine. I was watching a loud punkish band called Baboon on the main stage when I began concentrating on the powerful pounding bass from the speakers. I play bass and can take a lot of noise, but this was too much. I could feel my skull pulsating and vibrating to the tones and I thought I felt the molecular structure of my brain begin to break up and thought I was going to throw up, so I managed a uh, I just have to leave and stumbled away from the sound. The time from when, I, from when I left to when I saw a familiar face was an eternity and I found that I had emotionally, emotionally regressed to the state of an infant wanting only the most familiar female face and comfort. It was a very good test of my ability to handle strong psychoactive drugs and having only taken LSD at the half a hit level and my current dose being 2.5 times the amount of morning glories as I had last taken, but I didn't lose it and found the friend I came with who has gone off and I had a blast all day meeting new people and bar hopping. I didn't want to bring her down, but needed someone to talk to I trusted her the most. When I left it was the last band playing, and by the time I had gotten my head together enough to move around, it was getting dark. I spent the next two hours wandering around Denton, with her as the police, with her. As the police shut Fry Street down for the year, we both were on an emotional roller coaster, and it took everything I had to get her to decide that she needed to come back home. The drive home was a little difficult, and I had to request conversation be kept to a minimum, and was really ready to get someplace safe and familiar. Looking back, the fare had been like total freedom and were free and I didn't notice how far into it I was, but it was much harder to handle simple tasks and responsibilities such as getting to the car. My attention span was horrible, but we got back to her house and invited a few friends to come over. We took some more seats. I took three more caps and this is when I had my most intense visuals being too worn out to do much else but lay on the couch. I saw movement in the patterns on the cloth of the couch 
and the plant atop the TV stand was swaying and flowing as if it were underwater. Anyway, this whole experience lasted about 10 hours on 500 seats and was for the majority of the trip extremely fantastic, beautiful and introspective. Even the bad trip was good in that I maintained the ability to bring myself to the surface. That day, eight people took them using a standard dosage and method. No one got sick and all had a glorious time. I believe that with morning glories, as with cannabis and other botanical hallucinogens, there is always a way out. Not so true of man-made chemicals, which are not in harmony with your natural neurochemistry. This is why I don't say fry anymore in reference to the LSA experience. It's inaccurate and inappropriate. Why not say I bloomed?